Today I want to look at a pretty interesting recursively defined sequence. So we've got a sub n plus 1 equals a sub n plus the sine of n. So this is much more complicated than a typical recursively defined sequence than we might see, but it's still fairly simple or fairly easy to solve. But the technique will be to take inspiration from differential equations. So let's notice if we move this a n to the left hand side, we have a n plus 1 minus a n equals sine of n. But this difference of two terms in a sequence that are consecutive really feels like a derivative of maybe the sequence. And in fact it is, it's the so-called discrete derivative. But if we start thinking about derivatives, maybe we should pass to true derivatives. And maybe the continuous or the limiting version of this equation would simply be y prime equals sine of x because we've got derivative over here and then sine over here. But that's easy to solve just by taking the antiderivative. We'll get minus cosine of x plus some constant a. So now let's take inspiration from this and form maybe a first guess for our solution. And that guess will be to set a sub n equal to some constant a times sine of n plus some constant b times cosine of n. And then just for good measure, we'll say some constant c because we expect you know, there to be a constant basically with respect to integration or a constant of integration built into this. Okay, so now let's plug this into our, well, it's called the difference equation, this thing right here. Okay, so let's do a n plus 1 first. So notice a n plus 1 is a times sine of n plus 1 plus b times cosine of n plus 1 plus c. So like I said, that's our a n plus 1. And then from that, we need to subtract a n, so that'll be a sine of n minus b cos n minus c, and this all needs to be equal to sine of n. Well, let's quickly notice that these c's cancel. They cancel immediately, which means really the c is allowed to be anything we want, which I think we probably expected to be true. So next up, we look at these kind of odd terms out. And I would say the odd terms out are the sine of n plus 1 and the cosine of n plus 1. And we think to ourselves, well, what can we do with these? But there are some nice formulas which are... But there are some nice sum angle formulas that will help us simplify these. And that would be sine of n times cosine of 1 plus sine of 1 times cosine of n. So again, that's from the well-known sum angle formula for sine. But there's also one for cosine, and that's also pretty nice. So what would that leave us with? Well, it would be sine of n times sine of 1 minus cosine of n times cosine of 1. Okay, good. So now let's plug those into, well, the place where we see sine of n plus 1 and cosine of n plus 1 and see what sort of simplification occurs. So this gives us cosine of n times cosine of 1 minus sine of n times sine of 1. Okay, good. And now let's expand this whole thing out. So we'll have a times cosine of 1 times sine of n. That's a multiplying through to this term. And then plus a times sine of 1 times cosine of n, a multiplying through to this term. And then we'll have plus b times cosine of 1 times cosine of n. That's b multiplying through to this minus b times sine of 1 times sine of n. And then finally, minus a times sine of n minus b times cosine of n equals sine of n. So there's a lot going on there. But now we're going to use the fact that the sine function and the cosine function are linearly independent. But that's just a fancy way of saying that we can take this equation right here that has two unknowns a and b and pull it apart into two equations 
with two unknowns by extracting the coefficients of cosine of n and sine of n. So let's start with the coefficients of cosine of n. So here we have a times sine of one. Here we have b times cosine of one. And then finally, here we have minus b. So that'll leave us with a times sine of one and then plus b times cosine of one minus one equals zero. Because I guess I should say there's no cosines on the right hand side. Now let's do the same thing with the coefficients of sine of n. So let's see, we have a times cosine of one right here. Then we have negative b times sine of one and then we have minus a right here. And then I guess we have the number one over here. So that'll leave us with a times the quantity cosine of one minus one from the first two terms and then minus b times sine of one. And that's gonna be equal to one now. Okay, but now we're gonna pass this system of equations to a matrix vector equation. It's just gonna make everything a little bit simpler to solve. So this is equivalent to the following matrix vector equation. So we'll have a sine one up here and then a cosine one minus one here, a cosine one minus one here, and then a minus sine one here. So this multiplied into the vector of coefficients a and b must be equal to zero, one. Okay, great. But notice that allows us to solve for this vector of coefficients fairly easily. So it'll be this big matrix right here, which maybe I won't enter in, inverse times the vector zero, one. Okay, so let's maybe bring that to the top and do the last couple of steps. Okay, so this is where we left ourselves off and now we're ready to finish it off. So let's start by taking the inverse of this matrix. But since it's a two by two matrix, there's an easy way to do that. So we'll have one over its determinant, which is the product of the diagonals minus the product of the off diagonals. So that'll leave us with negative sine squared of one, and then we'll have minus cosine squared of one plus two cosine of one, and then minus one. And then how do we get the rest of it? Well, we build the matrix by swapping the diagonals and negating the off diagonal. So that'll be minus sine of one here, one minus cosine of one here and here, and a positive sine of one here, and that's multiplying into the vector zero, one. But now by the Pythagorean trig identity, we know that minus sine squared minus cosine squared is simply one, so that means we can simplify this thing out front as one over two cosine of one minus two. The next step, we can do that matrix vector multiplication, and that'll leave us with one minus cosine of one in the upper entry. And then let's see the sine of one in the lower entry. But now multiplying that out, let's see, we get negative one half in the upper entry because everything simplifies quite nicely. And then in the lower entry, we'll have sine of one over two cosine of one minus one. And check it out. So that means our value of our coefficient a is simply minus half, whereas the value of our coefficient b is this kind of slightly more complicated object. But that means we can write down a closed formula for our sequence. So it'll be minus one half times sine of n, and then plus sine of one over two cosine of one minus two, so that should have been a two, times the cosine of n plus our constant c. So there we have it. We have indeed solved this recursively defined sequence. And like I said before, we took inspiration from solving a differential equation. And that's a good place to stop.